Hello, people of the interwebs, to your favorite garage dwelling, Sarah here, with another vehicle review. And not just any vehicle, this is the 2020 Land Rover Defender 110. This is probably one of the coolest vehicles I reviewed on this channel thus far. For those of you that weren't aware of the prior generation Land Rover Defenders, I think they did the perfect job of capturing the essence of that old school generation Defender and putting a modern twist on it, especially these headlights, look how pissed off and menacing that thing looks. The 110 I'm reviewing today does have these gloss black 19 inch wheels and they look good, but I don't want a gloss black 19 inch wheel if I'm gonna do some serious off-roading. That's just asking to get scratched up. Luckily, the base model comes with some gloss white 18 inch steelies. That's what's up. They are wrapped in 255, 65, 19 inch Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires. And because this does have the nearly 400 horsepower straight six in it, look at the size of the front brakes on this thing. That's why it's got 19 inch wheels because it's got massive brakes. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever seen a body color matched wiper cowl and it is plastic, it's not metal. Those have to be the most fun taillights on any vehicle ever. They look like space Legos. All right, see how this thing opens up. Just like that, huh? This is so cool back here. I love the little windows up on the sides. The material that they use on the bottom of the floor and on the back of the seats is so durable and rugged feeling. No way. There's a button right here so you can lower the ass end if you gotta load stuff in it. It's got a little power inverter, 110, 180 watt. What's under here? Storage and foam. I only had this Defender for a short period of time to film the review on, so I'm gonna be brief on what I cover on the interior and just really give you what stood out to me the most. And first things first, when you hop into this thing, it feels durable as hell in here. Everything feels like it's meant to just have the shit pounded out of it and it will last. All the materials, while they look cheap at first, they, they have nice textures to them, like the center console here and the dash has this clothy foam texture to it. It's like a new material I've never felt before. It's cloam. That's such a thing. Ooh, it's a nice door. Wow, that is so solid when you shut the door. This thing's built like a fortress, jeez. I like that this has this cloth synthetic leatherette hybrid seat. Also feels like someone could Ralph on it and it would wipe up nice and easy. It does have seat heaters so you can cook that Ralph if you want to. That's so disgusting. I like that the climate control knobs on here are dual function. When you press them down, you can actually turn up your seat heat with the same button that you'd use to turn up the in-cabin heat. Command style seating too so I can see up above the person sitting in front of me. That's fun when you're off-road so you can feel like you're in the front seat when you're in the back seat. No, I didn't forget about the bolstering test. It's not bad. These are also 14-way power adjustable. It's uh, an add-on, doesn't come like that. There's a little speaker right here. What is that for? Hello? The infotainment screen has a pass-through behind it. You can stick your hand all the way behind there and there's a tray that it sits in that also feels super durable and you could spill something in there and wipe it up real easy. There's a USB charge port so you can charge your smartphone or whatever you want to put up inside that tray and charge. I love how the door panels are finished in the exterior body color. This one being the Gondwana stone. I would have to wax these. Hell, I would, if for $72,000 I'd probably cut and buff these too to get rid of the orange peel. There's also exposed stainless steel hardware. All right, let's start this thing up and see what it sounds like. As far as tech features go, this does have a heated windshield part of the cold weather package. And it's weird because it, I thought the windshield was tinted at first. It's got this film, you can see these little zigzag lines going through it. Also has heated washer jets and the windshield and on your headlights as well as the heated steering wheels part of that package too. I did find that the headlight control stock on here 
is kind of confusing to use. You have to turn and hold it into the position that you want the lights to do. I thought that was strange. This thing has got a 12 volt cigarette lighter style, USB, USB, 12 volt cigarette lighter style. I do love the look of the display on the infotainment system, but it was confusing at first when I first hopped in here. There's quite a bit in this menu system and the way they have it laid out with these different pages that you can scroll through. Yeah, it took me forever to figure that out. What? No way. Oh, <laughs> there's a USB outlet in the back of the seat rest. That is genius. I've never seen that before. The sound system in here isn't bad, but it didn't really impress me much. The gauges on here, they are full digital, just like the infotainment screen. And I have it on a setting right now where I can see the drive line and the wheels. I like that it's equipped to this camera based rear view mirror system because the spare tire on the back would actually block quite a bit of your view if it didn't have this. It's got a child safety locks. Looks like I'm not going back up front. Cute. But strange, why is there a person on this button? Ouch. Try not to get my feet all over the fabric. I don't want to be that person. Although this thing looks like it's been off road before. Let's see what this thing can do off road. I got my sister following behind me in her Xterra chase vehicle. So this would be a nice comparison, a $72,000 off roader versus a $1,900 off-roader. It's a little bit of an advanced trail. I did make it halfway up this in a Subaru cross truck before. It's the upper half that's what's tricky. Oh, there's poop everywhere. You guys shit everywhere. Like, there, look at this, that shit pile is bigger than my head. I'm gonna keep it in just the default settings to make it up this first half of the trail because I don't think this first part is gonna challenge this truck whatsoever. I really like how they give you an option in the terrain modes that you can actually go in and configure your own. So you can set it up the way you want it specifically for your style of off-roading. So you can select how you want your differentials, your powertrain, oops, I didn't mean to go that fast, your steering. There's all kinds of different things that you can configure inside here to make it just what you need for whatever trail you're on. This challenge is crossovers and all-wheel drive lifted cars but something like this yeah i also have the ride height just set in normal as well that's <laughs> that's like nothing not even struggling another fun feature i couldn't try out just because there's no water anywhere around me is the wade sensing feature this will go through up to 2.9 feet of water when you have the ride height in the off-road mode in regular mode it's 2.7 feet it's insane. I bet you the limits are so high on this thing. Okay, so this is pretty steep coming down into here. Uh, let's see, off-road cam. So I have different cameras. I can switch between on-road and off-road. This part used to be difficult, but uh, it honestly sitting in this thing right now, it doesn't even look that challenging. Kinda put one tire on one side, one tire on the other side that nonsense in the middle. Ooh. This is so easy. This is so easy. This is usually a tough trail for some vehicles. It's like driving through a parking lot in this truck. This part's a bit rocky. I could try out the rock crawl feature, but don't think it needs it. I really don't think you need all those electronic modes. I have a feeling this truck's capable of doing everything all on its own. <laughs> this thing has got so much torque. I'm surprised they didn't just rip that boulder out of the ground. Oh, this thing is so rad. Ooh, this bit's kind of narrow and scary. Thank you, camera. Ooh. I just like threw up in my mouth a little bit when I saw how far down that was. I don't care how good a truck is off-road. You fall down a cliff, you're fucking dead. There's all kinds of different menus that you can go through for off-roading. I'm going to go to the one right here. It says wheel info. There you go. It says my altitude. I'm at 5,003 feet above sea level. I almost don't even really have to pick a line because this thing just like floats above it all. And here is the real test. Oh, <laughs> this 
car always makes me nervous every time I see it. And I've gone up this hill a couple times already. I'm going to put this thing in rock crawl. Not that I think it needs it, just because this is like, I want to try something out. Select low range. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So I'm limited to 15 miles per hour. Oh geez. Oh geez. Oh my, this is scary. Oh geez. Oh, this is, I can't see anything but sky. I don't even want to look down at the camera. Like a little goat. Fuck yeah, this thing did it like a champ. Oh, that was awesome. This is so fun. Let's keep going up here. Yeah, definitely putting it in low range and rock crawl was major overkill. Cause it, that was like nothing. All right, time to go back down. This thing does have hill descent control. ATPC selected. Now I want to set my speed. I got mine set at two miles per hour, so everybody sees me. Somebody will get that reference. It was lyrics, in case you didn't. Oh, geez. <laughs> this hill descent control jabs those brakes on. I actually think I'm gonna go a little bit slower when I get to the steep spot. This is gonna be interesting to see how hill descent handles this part, because this is a gnarly hill. Oh, pucker factor 5,000 right now. Hey, the cows are laying down sleeping. If you guys want to know how my little sister's $1,900 Xterra project did on this trail, up above is a link to that video in case you haven't seen it yet because I think it came out before this. Hello, and welcome to Garage Science of Sarah. Under the hood of this P400 series Land Rover Defender is the Ingenium 3 liter turbocharged and electric supercharged dual overhead cam straight six. It produces 395 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 406 pound feet of torque at 2,000 RPM. And yeah, I said electric supercharged. The electric supercharger on here can spool up in a half a second to speeds of 120,000 RPM, which helps eliminate turbo lag and obviously give more power. Let me move this plastic engine cover so we can take a look at the engine on this thing. I could be mistaken, but that looks a lot like a water to air charge cooler on top of the engine. That's interesting. The 48 volt mild hybrid system stores energy from regenerative braking and it also helps with getting off the line and letting the engine do the start stop magic wizardry that it does. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. I'm going to disable trash control and that's it. Just gonna give this thing assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. Ooh. <laughs> Listen to this thing roar. This thing rips. Hello, I'm back. The drivetrain in this Land Rover obviously is four wheel drive and it has a two speed transfer case, electronic locking diff and an eight speed automatic transmission. Since I got a lift, I might as well make use of it. Let's check out the undercarriage and suspension of this thing. Holy shit. That's what I call some underbody protection. That's crazy. Big thick aluminum skid plates go all the way down pretty much where the driver's seats are at. That's crazy. Look how girthy this front anti-sway bar is. Everything is super rugged underneath here. It's hard to see, but this does have variable air suspension as well. Now you can get a good look at the airbags right here for the suspension. These lower control arms are absolutely enormous. It'll be interesting to see how this fabric lined underbody cladding in the center of the truck holds up off-road. I mean, it's rigid, but I could see it getting torn on rocks. It's time for the braking test. No one behind me. Oh man, here it goes. Oh shit, oh my god, ouch him. <laughs> oh, those hurts. As far as the driving goes for normal people, 
Uh, fuel economy on here is surprisingly decent because it is a mild hybrid and I have not seen it dip below 17.3 and that's with off-roading and giving it the beans. I think that's acceptable for a vehicle like this. It's comfy because it's got the air suspension. It's not super harsh. It is, you can definitely feel, feel its ride height and center of gravity. You don't want to take corners super fast in this thing, but it's not what it's meant for. Aside from that, I, I love this thing. I love driving around this thing. It's just so badass looking. This is like take 500 of the ending of this video because there's like hurricane force winds on top of this peak right now. So I'm gonna try this one last time. If you guys have never seen one of my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score, it is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the P400 series of this Defender 110 is getting a rating of 1.8 beans this thing is excessively quick for what its intended purpose is doing stuff like this off-road and i love that about it next up is the meatball score it is a rating of one to five meatballs based on a truck's ability to tackle rocks that smell like meat off-road don't smell rocks and this defender 110 is getting a rating of four meatballs I don't know what the limits of this truck would be and it's way above my ability level to find out, especially on something that doesn't belong to me and cost this much. Either way, I think this is one of the most capable off-road vehicles I've ever reviewed on this channel thus far. Next is a cookie score. It has a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment to value. And this Defender right here, as equipped, is getting a rating of two point six cookies. $72,000 is a lot of money for a vehicle that's intended purpose is going off-road. And if you take a truck off-road, you're gonna mess it up. So it's kind of, it's hard for me because look what else you can buy for way less. Lastly is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And this Defender right here is getting a rating of 4.7 penguins. I absolutely adore this thing. Yes, it is expensive, but it does also feel a lot more special driving this than you would just a Tacoma or a Jeep because you see those everywhere. You don't see these everywhere. And this thing definitely gets stares when it drives by. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this review and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.